Hello everyone, it's so good to be here and thanks for joining in on this session. By way of an overview, here's what we'll cover today. This introduction and then the main topic which is building search with Gatsby and Google Sheets and some more cool plugins. We'll look at code snippets and then have some time for Q&A. My name is Stu West and I live in the beautiful city of Cape Town in the south near a beach area called Musenberg. I work for Amazy Labs as a web developer and a team lead for the extensions team. We build new features and add-ons to our client sites and I'm married to Wendy who is an illustrator and we have two cats and four chickens. I try to surf when I find time although I tend to normally wait for perfect conditions and I play guitar and sing vocals in a cover band called Fully Covered. A funny story to mention is that a few of my friends wonder how I could be speaking at a Gatsby conference, as in South Africa, a Gatsby is this. A two to three foot long sandwich filled with delicious things like thick cut fries, salads or meats and sauces. If you want to see more, watch the Netflix series called Somebody Feed Phil, season two, episode five. So it's a great honor to be able to share with you some of my experience building a Gatsby project for the Heart Research Institute of Gulf of Mexico Studies, a website of theirs called Blue Value. The entire team was so excited to build this because it meant playing more with this shiny, amazing tool that is Gatsby. Blue Value was looking to rebrand and they needed an updated look and feel for their website. Knowing that users found it difficult to navigate, they also wanted to assess the usability of their database search tool. We developed this new search functionality, allowing the broad database to be accessed and filtered in a quick and easy way. Initially, we were going to build the site with Drupal or decouple Drupal, but since the website's content doesn't change frequently and the main updates are via spreadsheets, we realized that a more lightweight solution would help with speedier search results with a less complex technical infrastructure. So we decided to do a proof of concept with Gatsby, and this turned out to be the full product. On the left, the before shots, you can see the huge database and the search form at the bottom. They would have to select each of these inputs and then submit. On the right, we had a new look and feel with the search select inputs and then on the bottom right of the presentation, you can see the new search area and the results. And again, here's a bit of a close up. We can see that we've selected some options here of what we want to search through. And when you click show results, these results immediately show. So the amazing part was how easily the plugin system worked and how quickly we were able to prototype the first iteration of the site with real data. While we use several Gatsby plugins and some other React TypeScript packages, for now, I'll just mention Gatsby Source Google Sheets plugin to pull in data from Google Sheets. Now, before you get going and you have your Google spreadsheet ready, you're going to need to go to your Google Cloud Console and enable the Google Drive API and create a service account to get your credentials. Once you do that, you'll be able to download a credentials JSON file and that will have the configuration in it. You will also need to share the Google Doc with the service account email address that they give you. Now, all of these details are on the Gatsby plugins web page, so you'll be fine to find them there and I've linked them at the end. So over here, we'll have a look inside the config file, Gatsby config, and how we configure these plugins. So here we can see the Gatsby config for the Google Sheets plugin. All we have to do is add our sheet ID, which you can get from the URL, and then the worksheet title, which is the tab name, or at least the title of yeah, the tab, and then the credentials, which I mentioned before from the JSON file. It's probably best to use an environmental variable here. So in your .env file, just add those credentials into that. There are several options for Google Sheet plugins. Another one is called Gatsby Source Google Spreadsheets and that has some slightly different config. So over here, there's slightly different information. Again, the sheet ID from the Google Sheet URL, the tab title, and this time it has a tab prefix, GS, which I stands for, I think stands for Google Sheets, and then your credentials again. And don't add that to get 
So this is just a mock data spreadsheet that I made up and you can see the column names, first name, last name, email. Now we're gonna to want to remember these column names when we go to GraphQL or GraphQL to create our query. Now we can have a look at the GraphQ, GraphQL view of the source data we have available from the Google Sheets plugin after we run Gatsby develop and then Gatsby build. All we have to do is query the columns from our spreadsheet, which appear here as variables to select. Now remember in GraphQL, everything is self-documenting because it's so strongly typed. If you click on the docs tab at the top right, you'll be able to see everything available and what's inside each of the items. In this case, we're querying all Google Sheet, Sheet 1 row, then Edges node, and then the names of the columns. In this case, I've just selected three from the spreadsheet. And when we run the query, we can see the information on the right, on the far right panel. I really love GraphQL to be able to see what's in the graph. Next up, I'm going to show you a little video clip of using the search on the Blue Value website. Take note of how quickly the search happens. We started off with about 4,000 rows of data, but tested 10,000 rows, and the site search was still blazingly fast. On Gatsby Build, all the initial data is bundled in, so we could paginate and display the results from GraphQL in less than a second. One note, obviously, is that the larger the initial data, the larger the payload, causing the first load time of the page to be slightly slower on the web. But subsequent searches are super fast. Now, the great thing about Gatsby and its plugins is that they have amazing documentation. They have good practical examples and descriptions. Not only that, they just work. Next up, I'd like to chat about Git images in Gatsby. Because the site would be viewed on all devices, we looked at responsive images, and we were pleased to find as well the Gatsby background image ES5 plugin. With IE11 support, which was a requirement, this was the perfect plugin for us for our background images. And then the Gatsby image set of pa packages which allow you to show responsive images as needed on various devices. Gatsby Image is designed to work seamlessly with Gatsby's native image processing capabilities powered by GraphQL and the Sharp plugin. To produce perfect images, you need only import Gatsby Image and use it in place of the built-in HTML image tag. With a GraphQL query using one of the included GraphQL fragments, which specify the fields needed by Gatsby image. The GraphQL query creates multiple thumbnails with optimized JPEG PNG or web PNG compression. The Gatsby image component automatically sets up the blur up effect as well as lazy loading of images further down the screen. And of course, this can be customized. Now Gatsby image supports showing different images at different breakpoints, which is known as art direction. To do this, you can define your own array of fixed or fluid images along with a media key per image and pass it to Gatsby's fixed or fluid props. So in this component example, you'll see we have our image media eco component with constants, mobile image and desktop. We're using the static query with GraphQL. And here we're labeling the first image, which will be our mobile image and then we're using the child image sharp plugin, using the fluid option with max width of 768 and quality of 100%. And then that gets passed through to Gatsby image sharp fluid with WebP and no base 64. And we found this to be the best option for what we needed. Then the desktop image, we're labeling that file, which is this ecographic large, again, passing it to child image sharp or at least getting the info from that variable in GraphQL. Um, we're saying fluid, max width 1348, quality 100, and then we're passing it to a similar Gatsby processing plugin. As we can see, cons sources mobile image, and we're passing in the information there. 
and then we are setting a media query of 769 for the desktop image. So on the right at the top, you can see the mobile image and then the larger desktop image at the bottom. In the component right near the end, we return the Gatsby image component, large I, IMG image. And then we're passing the sources above those const sources to fluid props. We're giving it a class name and we even using the object fit option with Gatsby image. Now, one thing to mention is that if you don't specify source set breakpoints, Gatsby will create multiple image sizes for you, which is very helpful. So you almost don't have to worry about what size device is going to view. Gatsby would create a whole stack of images up to those max widths we spoke about. Now, this isn't too much of a problem, but we found that on some hosts, when we were doing a Gatsby build, the build would sometimes time out if there were too, Im too many images on the site or too many image variations to create. So setting source set breakpoints can help with only building the image sizes you need. Here's the desktop background image, which is rather large, and then a screenshot of mobile with a smaller background image. For the search select widget, we used React Select as it is fully featured and could be styled easily. We could pass it the array of results and action some custom hooks. So in this component, we're using React Select's option of is a multiple select. We have a name services, value service state, um, and then pull in the data. We added some Tailwind classes. We have some options and on change hooks, placeholder text styles and option styles. Again, these are all documented on the React Select website. We did face some challenges because some external NPM packages needed to be tweaked to work with TypeScript, such as range input and um, some other filter and React pagination NPM packages. So for pagination, we found the RC pagination NPM package, which worked really well. So over here, we just have a error function to run um, to set some offsets um, with the, and page limits. And then we use the pagination component at the bottom when we change the pagination on change, we go and run that function. We have our current page, the total amount of pages and the page size with our page limits. We also found plugins for exporting to PDF and CSV, which worked right out the box again. And for the contact form, we use Formic with Google Recapture plugin as well. There are so many great plugins to use. We use Tailwind for quick styling of this prototype, and that was also wonderful. So all in all, the numerous plugins and packages available worked with ease, and that is such a breath of fresh air. The advantages of Gatsby for projects are clear. It uses asset optimization, smart image loading, code splitting, and server-side rendering, all of which add up to lightning-fast SEO-friendly sites. I've included some links for this end of this presentation where you can go through and read our blog articles and case study on Blue Value. Also the plugin URLs for the plugins we used. And here are some more other Gatsby plugins that you'll be needing. Coming to the end of my presentation, thank you so much for listening. And we're gonna have a time now live for some Q&A. Thank you so much.